me warmly welcome you to uh, CSIS. It's quite a day uh, for the uh, financial uh, and banking leaders of the world to converge on Washington, D.C. The markets are, uh, are certainly uh, reacting to, uh, to the leaders uh, appearing here. Uh, we're lucky to have one of the superstars uh, of that group of, of finance ministers uh, and, and finance secretaries uh, from around the world. A good friend and a terrific leader of the Philippines, uh, Secretary Cesar Parisima. He served as, uh, he, he assumed his office as uh, Secretary of Finance in the Philippines uh, about a year ago, uh, last July, uh, just over a year ago. Uh, and uh, before that, he served as Secretary of Trade and Industry from 2004 to 2005 and Secretary of Finance in 2005 and was reappointed as the Secretary of Finance um, again uh, last year uh, by, uh, by President Aquino. Uh, prior to re um, resuming his responsibilities at the Department of Finance, he was the chair and member of the board of the National Power uh, Corporation of the Philippines, the Land Bank of the Philippines, and the Monetary Board. He's worked, uh, for any of you who know the Philippines well, in the field of uh, public accounting and is um, absolutely known, well known as uh, one of the leaders uh, in that field uh, in the Philippines and actually uh, globally. So where, there's, where the money goes, uh, I think Secretary Parisma has a, a very good uh, handle on, on how to track that. He's a De La Salle man uh, for, for undergrad and has an MBA from the Kellogg Graduate School of Management at uh, Northwestern University in Chicago. Uh, so I guess he's, he's born some cold winters um, as well as those hot uh, summers in, in Manila. It's a great pleasure for me to introduce our, our guest speaker for today, uh, Secretary Cesar Parisima. Thank you for joining us. Thank you. Thank you, uh, Ernie, for your uh, very kind uh, introduction. Uh, good afternoon, uh, everyone. Uh, I think I'm among uh, friends here. I see uh, an old friend from, uh, uh, you know, his uh, U.S. Embassy days in Manila, uh, Dan uh, uh, Martinez, who's back, I think, in uh, uh, Washington and several other uh, faces we've seen the past uh, uh, few days. It's very hard to uh, give a talk in uh, uh, Washington on the in the sidelines of the World Bank IMF and not talk about uh, what's going on uh, uh, right now. No? So before I talk about uh, the Philippines, let me uh, share some of my thoughts uh, on what's going on. Um, I think we are in a period of uh, transition. Uh, and uh, just like uh, when uh, two big rivers meet, you know, uh, there's turbulence. And uh, until the fundamental issues, both in Europe and the US, are um, addressed, I think we're going to expect uh, volatility. It will be like a roller uh, coaster. And in Europe, uh, you have uh, three interrelated uh, uh, problems the sovereign debt uh, problem, the banking problem that's very closely related uh, uh, to it, but more fundamentally, the, the competitiveness uh, issues, especially of Southern Europe, uh, combined with a structural issue uh, related to uh, the Euro, uh, the monetary union, without the fiscal uh, uh, union. And unless they deal with these fundamental uh, uh, issues, I, I think uh, we cannot uh, you know, uh, sweep this away. And uh, this is going to be the challenge uh, uh, for the financial managers of the world for the next uh, uh, few years. In the case of the US, it is more solvable, but it will have to wait till uh, political clarity uh, comes after the elections uh, uh, next year. In the meantime, I think uh, we have to get used to this uh, uh, very rough uh, ride. When uh, President Aquino uh, took office uh, last year, and if I were giving a talk uh, at this time last year, we would have never have predicted uh, what uh, a year we've been through no? uh, with uh, what happened to Japan, the Middle East, and of course, uh, Europe and the US. But the best thing countries can do, and that's what we're doing in the Philippines, is really to focus in the, on the fundamentals. 
And uh, that's what uh, President Aquino uh, is doing in the uh, Philippines. Um, I fondly refer to it as economics, no? and there are uh, four pillars to it. Uh, that's uh, fiscal sustainability and uh, macroeconomic stability, uh, the area of infrastructure investments. Uh, third is uh, making doing business in the Philippines uh, much uh, easier. And finally, investment in uh, uh, people. In those uh, four pillars, I'm proud to say that uh, uh, President Aquino's administration has uh, made the major strides. In the area of uh, fiscal sustainability, we've charted a path uh, towards uh, uh, medium-term uh, uh, fiscal consolidation with a goal of uh, having a deficit of 2% uh, to GDP by the end of 2013. In fact, our August numbers uh, was released yesterday, and we had a budget surplus. No? And uh, people are criticizing us for underspending. No? Uh, totally different problem. But uh, President Aquino's policy is to make sure that every cent that we collect from the people is properly accounted uh, uh, for. And uh, August um, was uh, really principally a result of better revenues. Our revenues were up 15% uh, uh, year uh, on year. But the challenge is not a surplus, or to achieve a surplus one month or the next. No? The challenge really is uh, investing in the institution so that uh, the programs, the reforms that uh, we've instituted can uh, last beyond the Aquino administration. And that's what we are really uh, focusing uh, on. Uh, the program calls for uh, improving administrative efficiency by investing in uh, information technology, improving processes, better use of uh, uh, information, uh, fighting charges after uh, tax evaders and uh, uh, tax uh, smugglers, and really with the goal of reforming our uh, tax uh, structure so that it is more progress progressive and uh, equitable. So this is an ongoing uh, program. Our target this year is a uh, deficit of 3%, but I believe that uh, uh, we will uh, be well within that uh, target. Our goal next year is 2.6% of uh, uh, GDP. On the macroeconomic uh, side, uh, Grover Notetankos also here in uh, Washington has done a good job. In fact, the president has decided to give him another uh, six-year uh, uh, term no? as a vote of confidence uh, to uh, what he's done uh, the past uh, six years. Uh, uh, we've uh, improved the management of our banking uh, system. Our uh, reserves are at historic highs. So we're a balance of payment uh, surplus uh, uh, country. Uh, in fact, our debt to GDP is uh, down to 42% uh, net of holdings of uh, uh, our uh, GFIs and local government uh, units, which is very close to our peers. In fact, I'd like to uh, uh, say confidently that uh, we are underrated by the credit rating uh, agencies. We borrow at investment grade uh, uh, rates, uh, but we're not rated investment uh, uh, grade. In fact, uh, I haven't looked at the uh, rates uh, now, but two weeks ago, we were borrowing at a lower cost than Italy when they issued a $15 billion uh, uh, four-year or five-year uh, uh, bond. No? Uh, but the point is uh, the key in this, area, uh, in this uh, era of uh, turbulence and transition is really to continue to invest in the fundamentals. So that's what we will focus uh, on. Uh, uh, the, na the next uh, few uh, years, fiscal sustainability and macroeconomic uh, uh, stability. In the area of infrastructure, we need to make sure that the gap between us and our ASEAN neighbors in particular uh, be uh, removed in, part uh, in, in terms of uh, infrastructure. This is key to our competitiveness, especially with the ASEAN integration uh, coming uh, in 2015. Uh, President Aquino has a program to tap uh, private sector capital, expertise, uh, technology, and management uh, to help government in uh, achieving uh, this. Uh, we've uh, uh, revisited the PPP uh, regime in the Philippines. Uh, we have one uh, out already at Tollway uh, Projects and several, uh, several more in the 
pipeline. So we will use a combination of PPP, uh, ODA, and uh, budget space to, to uh, improve our uh, infrastructure. In fact, this is going to be the best use of the foreign exchange that's coming our way as a result of the uh, policies uh, in the U.S. Uh, uh, to, to, to use uh, foreign exchange uh, in a more productive uh, uh, manner. And that's going to be the challenge for not only the Philippines, but the rest of uh, uh, Asia. The World Bank, uh, the Asian Development Bank, uh, estimates that uh, ASEAN alone will need at least $60 billion in uh, infrastructure investment for the next uh, uh, five to uh, eight years. No? Uh, and uh, as a result of this need, the ASEAN finance ministers have uh, embarked on uh, the creation of a fund to facilitate the rec recycling of, uh, of these reserves uh, in, within ASEAN. Uh, it is a modest amount to start with, but our goal is to make sure that uh, this becomes uh, in, uh, rated double A at the very least so that uh, the central banks of the region can invest in this fund to, to facilitate the recycling of uh, our reserves into our uh, infrastructure in um, ASEAN. In terms of uh, improving um, uh, you know, the, the environment uh, for businessmen in the Philippines, uh, the president has uh, uh, made this a priority. In fact, uh, in the latest World Economic Forum uh, ranking, we've uh, jumped 10 notches, uh, but we're still at 75. We'd like to be in the upper quartile. And to do this, we really need to work on uh, many areas. No? Uh, we've uh, made the baby steps the past uh, year uh, in this regard. For example, uh, the Land Bank of the Philippines and the Securities and Exchange uh, Commission have uh, agreed to cooperate in terms of uh, uh, incorporation of uh, entities no, in the Philippines. Before, uh, you uh, can only do it in the eight offices of the Securities and Exchange uh, uh, Commission. Uh, with their uh, agreement starting last September 15, you can now go to any of the land bank uh, branches uh, in the Philippines to incorporate uh, uh, companies, uh, new companies. Uh, this is uh, a palliative. No? Um, uh, we really need to invest in uh, IT because the ideal situation is to create a portal that uh, would allow you, even from here in Washington, D.C., to incorporate a company in the uh, Philippines. Uh, the Philippine Business Registry is being uh, uh, developed by the, uh, the Department of Trade and Industry. In the Bureau of Customs, we're finalizing uh, uh, the, the plans for implementation of our national single window that will uh, make it easy for importers and exporters to get permits from over 40 uh, agencies through one portal. And if this works in the Philippines, then we can connect our national single window uh, to the national single window of, of other countries, no? which again will facilitate trade uh, between uh, us and our trading uh, partners. The Department of Local Governments, for example, has a program to uh, harmonize uh, forms and uh, procedures in the 200 largest local government units. So we're investing in this area. Our goal is that by the time the President Aquino leaves office, we should be in the upper quartile. Uh, in the surveys of uh, competitive rankings of uh, countries around the uh, world. Now, in terms of uh, people, you know, which is really the key asset of the Philippines, the, uh, you know, the source of uh, our strength and our pride, um, our balance of payment surplus, for example, is due to our remittances, uh, which has proven to be resilient, uh, again, due to our, uh, the quality of uh, our workforce. Uh, our BPO industry, which is growing 20% uh, uh, per year, is now among the top three uh, in the world. Again, it's due to the quality of our workforce. So is our electronics industry, our shipbuilding uh, industry, and uh, across many other uh, uh, sector sectors. But the key is really continuing to invest in uh, our people. So for example, in the 2012 budget, 33% will go towards uh, investment in people from education, health services, and uh, conditional cash transfers, which really is uh, an investment in the children of the poorest of the poor. So that uh, as we 
improve uh, our economy, they can become productive uh, uh, participants. No? So this is a key strategy of the Philippines. Right now, when you compare the Philippines as a country with our neighbors, it is very hard to uh, compare favorably. But when you compare a Filipino with uh, neighboring uh, uh, citizens, then you have a chance to be compared uh, uh, favorably. And that this is going to be our key uh, strat strategy. But underlining all of this is uh, good governance. No? Uh, the, the key strategy of President Aquino is to continue to invest in the institutions of government so that uh, we can make it not only a catalyst for uh, the flow of uh, capital, but a partner of the business uh, uh, sector in, in building the uh, Philippines. The past uh, 12 years, no, we have continued to grow, but a very, at very low rates. No? And as a result, uh, poverty in the Philippines have continued to increase. And the reason, I think, is uh, primarily the quality of uh, governance. President Aquino believes that uh, with better governance, uh, private sector will have more confidence. And with more confidence, uh, uh, they will make more investments. And with more investments, they will create more jobs. And the consumers will have more buying power. No, and we get deeper into the virtuous uh, cycle. And that really is at the heart of what he is trying to uh, uh, do. And uh, his goal is that by the time his term ends, that he's done a lot of reforms in this area so that his successor will have no choice but to continue the reforms that he started. In his own words, yesterday he was at the World Bank. No? He said, and I quote, the goal is to percolate socio-economic development to the greater majority. And it all begins with cleaning up government, instituting a culture of transparency and accountability. At the bottom line, a culture of trust in government. The strengthening of institutions levels the playing fields Field and provides for an environment conducive to economic growth. Any gains that will be reaped from this growth are then channeled into vital social services, such as those in education, health, and poverty alleviation. People who are educated and healthy have the capability to exploit the livelihood opportunities provided to them by business. They are likewise empowered as consumers which further spurts economic growth at the macro level. Good governance is at the heart of his administration's socio-economic strategy, and the people are at the center of good governance. Governing with integrity, with honesty, with transparency, with accountability, not only heals a national psyche that has long been characterized by cynicism and mistrust of government, it also provides the foundation for equitable progress. Good governance is good economics. So that's what we're trying to do in the Philippines. It takes time to build institutions. It takes time to have reforms. It's not going to be a single event. It's not going to be a single policy. It's going to be a journey. But the past year, we've had uh, changes across the board from policies to programs to the way we do uh, governance in the country. For example, we've opened up the skies outside Metro Manila, uh, which uh, should augur well for tourism in the Philippines, which we believe is the low-hanging opportunity for our country. We're going to align this by investing in infrastructure and by encouraging the private sector to build hotels and other services for tourism. So good governance, hopefully, will resonate across uh, the seas. And hopefully, the question uh, that's always in the mind of investors uh, from outside the Philippines about uh, the way things are done in the Philippines can uh, be answered. And hopefully, with that answer comes more investments 
uh, into the Philippines, which should help us uh, build our country. So I'd like to invite you, you know, to come for a visit so that uh, we can show you uh, new Philippines under new management. Thank you. Thank you very much, uh, Cesar. It's a, that's a, a compelling uh, case, and, and you've laid out a, uh, a great framework for, for reform in the Philippines. I also want to say, say thank you to uh, Ambassador Quisha for his leadership here in the United States. He's, uh, he's bringing that message uh, to us and to Congress and to investors and to Filipino Americans and others uh, in civil society here, so we really appreciate his work. And I also uh, would like to thank the congressman who have joined you uh, on this trip. Um, and I know they were here with you and the President. But thank you for coming to uh, CSIS today. We know that your work in the, in the area of reform and uh, transparency in the, in the financial sector is very important in the Philippines. So thank you for, your, for coming. I'd like to, uh, to open up the floor to questions. Uh, we, uh, it's an easy format. We just ask that you let us know um, who you are and, and what your affiliation is. And, um, I, I thought I would uh, kick off, if I could, with, a, with an initial question. And that is, um, you, you mentioned Europe and uh, uh, the fact that they have economic union without fiscal union. Could you talk a little bit about what the ASEAN finance ministers might be learning from the, the current crisis, and particularly maybe the looking at Europe? Because a lot of people talk about ASEAN integration and they say, would that be, eventually would that look sort of like a European model? And, I wondered if what you're thinking about that now. We um, often refer to uh, uh, what we try to do in uh, ASEAN as the ASEAN uh, uh, way. In fact, uh, in terms of uh, bringing together the 10 uh, countries, we are uh, very mindful of uh, the stages of development those 10 countries are in. Uh, we have on one extreme uh, one of the richest countries in the in Asia, and uh, on the other extreme probably some uh, one of the poorest country in uh, Asia. The idea is to uh, bring in the ten at their own uh, uh, pace and uh, take advantage where there are opportunities. For example, even before the 2015 integration. Uh, we've integrated 13 industries that we thought were already ready for integration. Among them are electronics, garments, um, some uh, automotive uh, uh, parts. No? And uh, what we've seen is that in the 13 industries that we've integrated, they've become more sustainable because the cluster is now more uh, complete. So moving goods from one ASEAN country to another is like moving it from one U.S. state to another. So you get the benefits of a larger market that should attract uh, investments with scale that will have the efficiencies to be competitive in a glo very global market. That also improves the ability of ASEAN to become the alternative to uh, China or even uh, India. The, the vision of ASEAN is to be the hub of uh, ASEAN, uh, Asia uh, trade. We have never talked about a monetary uh, union. Uh, I think at best, probably, we will aim for a common customs uh, uh, border. Personally, that is something that I think uh, would be necessary so that you cut all this arbitrage place uh, that is uh, uh, going to happen if we don't try and reduce some of the disparities still uh, that's present in our customs uh, uh, rates no, and uh, rules. So I think uh, we're watching carefully what's happening in, uh, in uh, Europe. But one thing is clear. Uh, globalization is uh, here to stay, and uh, countries will have to uh, be part of it. Uh, to, to uh, uh, flourish. And to be part of it, uh, you must have the scale. Uh, you must build um, islands of excellence 
that can become part of global supply chains. And uh, that's what we're trying to uh, do in the Philippines and the rest of ASEAN. That's why the key theme of ASEAN now is uh, connectivity. Within ASEAN, with its uh, dialogue partners, China, uh, uh, Korea, Japan, uh, and we're trying to add India and the rest. No? And uh, I think uh, if this works, uh, uh, this would be good uh, for the whole world because the solution really uh, for the world now is for intra-Asia uh, trade to increase with Asia as the uh, ultimate consumer. Uh, this is, uh, I think, going to be the challenge uh, for all of us to try and shift our strategy from uh, export to the West model to one that's uh, export within Asia, consume uh, within uh, Asia. And this is where I think uh, harmonization of policies uh, among countries would be uh, cr crucial, especially uh, in terms of uh, exchange rates. Uh, because we cannot uh, continue to use exchange rate as a tool for uh, uh, competitiveness, especially with what's happening uh, now. Yeah. So we're watching uh, carefully what's happening and trying to learn from it. Yeah. Thank you. Can we open the floor to, uh, to other questions? Okay. Uh, I, I thought you would have one, Nick. <laughs> I, I knew this was a friendly Yeah. Thing. It's friendly, uh, uh, first of all, um, uh, I'm Nick Small from Crown Agents. Um, uh, my question is, uh, Secretary, you mentioned uh, ease of doing business and, and working towards uh, uh, simplifying processes across the Philippines. Um, you mentioned the national single window, and I understand um, there's already been great success in the Philippines with this, and uh, uh, I heard a number recently of... Uh, close to half a million transactions already going through the Philippines national single window. Do you envision that uh, the Philippines may in fact um, bring some of its expertise now out to ASEAN where uh, some of the other member countries may be struggling in this area and uh, could benefit from the experiences of the Philippines? Well, in areas where uh, we're the center of excellence, uh, definitely. But uh, in areas where we're, uh, we have a lot of problems, I'd rather not. No? Uh, it's like uh, spreading a virus, <laughs> and we don't want to do that. Uh, but clearly, um, um, we are uh, working on uh, use of technology so that uh, we can uh, have better information as a tool for uh, performance measurement, which I think is key to creating uh, meritocracy and institu institutionalizing the reforms that the president uh, is trying to uh, uh, do. I think ultimately that's going to be the challenge uh, uh, for us. And uh, I think uh, this will take time because uh, uh, you, you have to convince uh, everyone that uh, they're going to be winners uh, in this uh, change uh, uh, process. And I think uh, um, a lot of uh, those that benefit from the current uh, situation may not want that to happen, and that's ultimately the challenge uh, uh, for us. Uh, Mr. Secretary, uh, Chuck Westrip from Peregrine. Uh, we've talked before about this, and I just wanted to see if you could give us an update on where we stand on the harmonization and equalization of incentives. Uh, it the different freeport zones and in, in, in the different areas within uh, the Philippines. I know there was some kind of uh, uh, legislation going on uh, a few months ago, and I just wondered if you could give us an update on that. To, in terms of people investing in, in the country, uh, you go to different locations and you get different incentives. So I, I just would like to see if you have an update on that for us. Well, the bill is now with the Senate and we're working with the Senate uh, so that um, we um, can uh, go to BICAM and ultimately have uh, a bill ready for signature of the uh, president. The idea is to uh, be smart with uh, incentives. 
we accept that um, we need incentives, uh, but at the same time, uh, we believe that um, incentives uh, have sunset uh, provisions and that uh, we use it to really develop industries that would not go to the Philippines without those uh, uh, incentives. And uh, we're working closely with the Senate on this, and we hope to finish it within the next uh, uh, 12 months. We have two congressmen here who've done their job already. Uh, so the Senate now is doing their job, and hopefully can get back to uh, the conference committee so that uh, they can agree on a common uh, uh, bill for signing of the president. Yeah. That sounds actually pretty functional. Could Maybe you should uh, transfer technology to uh, Capitol Hill. Uh, Al? <clears throat> yes, Mr. Secretary, uh, I'm Al Santoli, America, uh, Asia America Initiative, and my question is two related components, uh, one of which is that we talk a lot about industry and technology, but one of the greatest needs in the world, and it will be increasing, is food. Food, agriculture, food, and water are absolutely essential. Um, also, for investor confidence, it's about stability and a sense of coherency within the 7,000 islands and the, and the major regions of the country. Zeroing in on Mindanao, which has the best potential of agriculture and also uh, gas and oil between the Linguansan Swamp and the offshore area of Palawan, which also is a flashpoint for uh, instability and conflict. Um, it would seem that where people are more concerned in thinking about the more industrial sector, that these areas, like for instance, in environmental reclamation, for the peace process to work and for the, the gas, the natural gas, to be able to be utilized, that central Maguindanao area is, is, is critical. And I'm curious as to whether within the developmental plans you're thinking of, tying in good governance, tying in peace process, tying in foreign investments, there are plans being made to stabilize that area by uh, revitalizing that particular place because it, it's the centerpiece of climate, uh, agriculture, and energy. And then secondly, tied into this, we're entering in the next stage of this international economic crisis, I think. It's beyond a doubt that 2012 and probably 2013 are gonna be very tough years. With the kind of, of needs that are there um, in terms of human development, and I agree that the Philippines' best resource is its human resource, is the people. And rather than so many Filipinos with their goal in life to go someplace else in the world to utilize their skills to be developing it right at home so the Philippines can benefit from that. The non-governmental the non sector needs to have a more prominent role. And what gets in the way is that when people want to be helpful, far too often um, they get caught up in customs. And that, you know, for, you can't rely on charity but especially during the next couple of years, the non-governmental sector is gonna to have to have a key role with education, uh, social welfare, and all these things that are important in stabilizing the Aquino administration and building trust in government. I know Ambassador Quizias and formerly uh, Secretary Del Rosario, when he was ambassador here, is very concerned about that. Um, are there plans being made to help streamline the process so that the non-governmental sector will not be as difficult in getting materials, resources, supplies into the country to help health, education, and social welfare at the same time that you're doing the development of infrastructure and those things that would increase peace and investment? Your question has many parts. No? Uh, the, the first part, um, Mindanao, no? um, the president has uh, uh, sent a very clear signal that uh, he wants to resolve uh, the, the conflict there as quickly as possible. In fact, he flew to Japan to meet with the leader of uh, MILF and sent a message that uh, 
if they want to have peace, we should have it before 2013, before the election when he is uh, at his uh, political uh, uh, peak. And uh, that's what we're trying to uh, uh, accomplish. On uh, agriculture, we cannot uh, agree more. Uh, in fact, um, we're quite pleased to announce that uh, agriculture actually uh, led the growth in the Philippines the first half. Uh, grew by 7.1% uh, in the second quarter, 56 for the uh, first uh, half. But the, the key really is uh, investing again in infrastructure in uh, agriculture, investing in uh, uh, financial uh, inclusivity, uh, giving them access to financing, organizing them so that they are more uh, uh, bankable, and to, to bring in uh, business, the large business in particular, uh, to, to uh, that uh, area. And that's what we're trying to uh, uh, do. And Mindanao, uh, once peace can be uh, established, is certainly going to play a very big role. Uh, uh, role. In the budget for 2012, uh, the President increased the budget of the Department of Agriculture dramatically with the support of uh, uh, Congress not to build an uh, irrigation system uh, with the goal of improving our uh, uh, productivity. Uh, in terms of um, uh, NGOs helping out, no? Um, there is a Customs Modernization Act uh, uh, that was passed already by the lower house. It's now with the uh, Senate. Uh, that's one area we're looking into, except that uh, in the Philippines, um, they take advantage of this no? uh, as a conduit for uh, uh, smuggling. So we have to find a way, the right balance, so that those who really want to help uh, are allowed to uh, uh, do so. Uh, 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 but at the same time, those who take advantage uh, will be uh, uh, caught. So these are all being uh, uh, addressed. Yeah. Good afternoon, um, Secretary Purissima. I'm Mitzi Picard of Asia Society, and I have two short questions. My first one is, um, you talked about investing in people. Yesterday, when I heard um, President Aquino speak at the World Bank, he talked about a shortage of I believe 66,000 classrooms times 50 <laughs> students. So if you have, um, there's a problem of education in the Philippines in, in terms of infrastructure and school books and supplies, how are you gonna invest in the people? My second question is, um, you may have answered this, but I arrived late. Um, could you give us some prime examples of um, what your department has done in terms of slashing wasteful spending on the macro? On the school uh, uh, classroom uh, shortage, we uh, plan to uh, use uh, resources of the private uh, sector. In fact, uh, the first uh, tranche of 10,000 classrooms uh, will probably be bidded out in the next uh, uh, few weeks. This will be in regions 1, uh, 3, and uh, 14. Uh, I think uh, about uh, close to 10,000 uh, uh, classrooms. And the idea is to uh, build all the 66,000 classrooms by uh, the end of uh, next year, uh, both in partnership with the private uh, uh, sector as well as uh, uh, the government doing uh, uh, their part. Uh, we are also looking at uh, various models to uh, use the capacity of private schools. Uh, the GASPE uh, program uh, has been uh, quite successful Helping out, helping reduce uh, the backlog. Uh, on uh, your, what's the other part of the question? Um, on the spending, spending. Uh, the, the president uh, on day one uh, asked us to implement the zero base uh, budget, and we're starting to see the uh, impact uh, of that. And uh, we're uh, we're really uh, we change the way we utilize our uh, resources, not only in uh, the allocation of the resources, because uh, uh, the bulk of it you know, is really going to the priorities of the uh, president, plus the dividend of better ratings, which means lower interest costs, has created more fiscal space for us to do uh, social services as well as uh, uh, infrastructure. 
uh, we've also had uh, savings uh, in terms of less uh, corruption and less uh, uh, wastage. For example, in the Department of Public Works, we've noticed that we are saving between 10 to 20 percent uh, initially. In terms of uh, wastage, we've stopped projects that we believe did not make sense, uh, which has gotten us uh, into trouble with some European countries. But uh, we are holding our ground here uh, to send a clear message that uh, uh, we want projects to really make a difference you know, uh, and not be built for its own sake. Anjali Cordero from uh, Dow Jones and the Wall Street Journal. Uh, you just referred to you know, the turmoil in financial markets. And you know, we've seen emerging market currencies come across the world, come up under a lot of pressure because of the last couple of days. Are you concerned about the drop in the Philippine peso? And will you intervene to prevent the currency from falling too much? So I guess this is your two minutes already. So <laughs> she asked for two minutes after this. <laughs> <laughs> well, um, the central bank of the Philippines, no, which is uh, an independent uh, uh, agency um, headed uh, by a monetary board, um, uh, allows the market to determine the uh, exchange rate of the Philippine uh, uh, peso and uh, monitors uh, the exchange rate of the peso vis-a-vis uh, -vis, uh, a certain set of peer countries and uh, making sure that the movements are not uh, uh, disruptive. No? And when the movements are disruptive, that's probably when they tend to uh, uh, make uh, certain uh, moves no? to smoothen uh, these uh, changes. But outside of that, uh, uh, the best thing we can do is, re as I said earlier in my talk, is really invest in fundamentals to try to uh, invest in uh, uh, infrastructure and uh, align policies so that our businesses can be more competitive. Uh, that is the best way uh, we can help our uh, businessmen rather than play around with currency. Because once you do that, uh, it can lead to uh, trade issues, which we all do not uh, uh, want. No? So uh, the best thing is really to leave it up to the marketplace. Yeah. Elizabeth. Thank you, Mr. Secretary. Elizabeth Hernandez with Hewlett Packard. Uh, I don't have a question, but an offer, Mr. Secretary. I just came from uh, San Francisco for the APAC meetings. I was at the APAC Innovation, Technology, and Trade Conference. One of the things that APEC, after five years of hard work, uh, the subgroup on privacy has done, is set up a privacy benchmark. And the reason I wanted to mention this to you, and I'll tell you more, it's because of the BPO sector in the Philippines, which, as you said, grows 20% today, is third in the world. And we have the potential of going even further and creating a, a true competitive advantage if the Philippines focuses on the privacy law that's even higher than the baseline established at APEC last Sunday. And uh, we believe that it could even capture a significant part of market share from India, which is nowhere near uh, the Philippines in terms of its commitment in that area, whether it's privacy or security. And our chief privacy officer was one who was involved in this for the last five years at the APEC, and I'd like to offer uh, HP's assistance to the Philippines to come up with a, a law that will be very strong and create that competitive advantage. We will certainly have these discussions with officials from ICD and Congress, but with your support, I think, uh, uh, highlighting the impact it can have in growing this to attract the trust of consumers, especially those in the financial services sector that uh, are our customers in the BPO space, but also spurs uh, technology innovation that will allow the Philippines BPO sector to move up in the value chain. So that's my offer to, to you. I think that the two congressmen here have volunteered to sponsor your uh, uh, draft bill. <laughs> yeah. okay. As a matter of fact, it's uh, delaying a little bit uh, the Freedom of Information Act because you want to make sure that the privacy of data is preserved. Uh, so instead of having a companion bill, despite clearly the passage of both, we decided to prioritize first the privacy of data. And of course, a lot of human rights people say, hey, what's happening? 
a right to information to say, no, we have to protect also the rights of people to privacy. It's striking that right, that fine balance. Yeah. But what's interesting is if you can position it higher than the baseline benchmark that our other APEC economies are, are at right now, I think it, that uh, can create a true competitive it, advantage. It give me that if you have four sides, because I'm the old four. I knew if I invited Elizabeth, there would be deals cut in the middle of the in the middle of a uh, of a seminar. Thank you. It's it's good to see that. I, I uh, um, Minister or Secretary, before we let you go, uh, I guess there are two questions that um, sort of came in from the from our constituents, some of whom couldn't be here because of the other uh, the other meetings going on in town. Um, two questions were uh, they're not new questions for you, but the questions were uh, on trade. Um, could the Philippines get in the game on the uh, Trans-Pacific Partnership uh, eventually? And how do you think about that also relative to ASEAN plus three? And the second question was on infrastructure. Um, earlier, uh, I think you, you came uh, last year and we talked a little bit about how you were going to structure infrastructure projects. And I think at one point the plan was that the government would actually um, uh, st structure opportunities and offer it to the market um, instead of instead of the old way of you know sort of hearing what the market wanted to do and coming in. Although you were open to both, have you had any success in that um, sort of structuring infrastructure deals and offering it to the market? Those are the two questions. On uh, TPP, um, the, you know. The message I gave to uh, the U.S. Trade Rep is that uh, they should try and uh, use TPP as a way to help ASEAN integrate, no? rather than uh, divide uh, divide ASEAN by just including uh, a few uh, members. That's the first uh, point. Mm -hmm. And secondly, uh, they must be uh, they must recognize the different situations of the different uh, uh, countries. Now, for example, in the Philippines. Uh, we must uh, divide into three categories the changes that uh, would probably be required uh, if we become part of TPP. No? Uh, first category with those that uh, would uh, just uh, require executive action, which should be easy. Second category would be those that require a change in law, which can also be done no? given the uh, coalition that the president has. But there, there is a third category that requires constitutional change. And uh, that should uh, be discussed, but must not be a condition to becoming part of uh, uh, TPP. Because if you do that, it's like saying you're not welcome to be part of TPP because of the current uh, political situation in the Philippines. We're not ready to make, uh, to have a discussion on uh, constitutional uh, uh, changes. but. We'll certainly consider that once we have the, the, that discussion. So, and I think uh, uh, that should be the framework uh, of, uh, of uh, discussion uh, in terms of items that may need to be adjusted for us to become part of TPP. But certainly, uh, President Aquino believes in uh, uh, globalization, in uh, free markets, in the fact that uh, uh, the way forward is to further integrate the country. Uh, into uh, the global uh, uh, economy. And, um, you know, we would uh, like to work closely uh, with the U.S. on this. On infrastructure, um, as I mentioned earlier, um, we've, uh, we're in the process of building the first one, uh, which is a tollway south of Metro Manila. And uh, the school houses, uh, uh, school rooms, uh, is probably going to be the second that will uh, be bidded out. No? So the trust will be uh, a bias towards uh, solicited projects, but uh, of course uh, we will also consider unsolicited projects, provided that uh, they are uh, going to be. It's going to be win-win for the country that it is going to be taken up uh, uh, in a transparent uh, and uh, uh, fair manner, no, uh, not in a back room. The, the, the challenge for us is to make sure that the first few projects that we launch uh, would stand scrutiny and uh, remove the suspicions of our people so that this program can continue 
without problem because we will need this con program to continue even beyond the Aquino administration. The, 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 the needs uh, is so great that we won't be able to build everything uh, within the six years of the Aquino administration. The best thing we can do, establish the right framework, uh, give it the track record so that it can be sustained beyond our time. Thank you very much, sir. And I'd like to uh, ask the, uh, the group to thank me, or join me, and th please thank me. Thank you. I've always wanted to say that. Join me in uh, thanking Secretary Parisma for his, uh, his great comments today. Thank you very much. Thank you. 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 Thank you.